Today we're going to talk about some of the skills and some of the techniques that I used when I bought my first two RVs. My name's Neil Balthaser and I'm your host at Ultra Mobility, the channel all about Class B camper vans. If you're interested in Class B camper vans or are looking to buy, this is the channel for you. If you haven't done so already, I ask you to please consider subscribing. It's super easy. Just click the subscribe button and it'll help me continue to make great videos. Now, one of the first things that you should do before you purchase your RV is you need to find out what type of buyer you are. You really need to know yourself. So I recommend watching my video when I talk about the different types of buyers. Are you a premium buyer? Are you a performance-based buyer? Or are you a cost buyer? You need to be clear on what type of buyer you are. So the next thing that you should do is you should research, and I have done another video about this, to understand for that particular make and model and configuration of options, what's the right price for it? How much discount are people getting? And what is the absolute highest price that you're willing to pay? And also, what's the ideal price that you're willing to pay? There are two ways that you can negotiate for an RV. You can do it online, all of it, including signing the paperwork from a lot of dealers, or you can go into the dealer itself. Now, I've done it both ways, and I don't have a preference necessarily, other than to say, doing it online is a lot less pressure for you but it's also a lot less pressure for the dealer as well there is something about going directly into the dealer and having a physical presence there that the salespeople have a more intimate contact with you and they really don't want to see you walking off the lot that's an advantage for you when you show up physically to a dealer to purchase an rv Purchasing an RV doesn't have to be a negative experience. Now, the way to minimize the pain in the RV purchase experience is simply to educate yourself. Go in fully armed, knowing your facts, knowing everything about the camper van that you want to purchase, and knowing what is a fair discount in your region and the absolute maximum amount that you're willing to pay, and then stick by that through the entire negotiation process. Now I'm gonna give you some tricks and things like that that you can use in order to give yourself a little more leverage in negotiations. But the truth of the matter is, you could walk into the dealer with your absolute highest price and then just never move off of it, and you could probably get that deal as well. As long as you're willing to walk off the lot and the price that you're willing to pay is fair, you probably can make the deal happen. I can tell that you're a discriminating buyer because you're in one of the best built units in the industry. Now, what will you offer me for this unit? So we're going to start our negotiation now. They want me to be the first to offer. That always puts them in the better position, but oftentimes it's what you got to do. I always start not with the MSRP, but what the listed price is on the van. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the price that I want to pay the middle point between their starting list price and my starting offer. Well, I do like this van a lot. I think I'm going to offer you 100000 they're going to have a very bad reaction. Are you crazy? There's no way you're going to be able to buy a unit like this for that. Now at this point, they're going to give you the runaround about how they can't take an offer that low into their boss. But you just got to stick to your guns. They know what you're doing. You know what they're doing. Eventually, if you don't give in, they'll take it to their boss and they'll come back with a counter offer. I can't take that number into my boss. He'll laugh me out of his office. Give me something better that I can take into him, something realistic. This is another common tactic that the dealer will use, and that is to get you to bid against yourself. You'll give them an offer 
and then they'll make you feel bad about it and say they can't possibly take that into their boss. They'll be laughed out of their office. Can't you give them something a little bit more reasonable? In effect, what they're doing is they're having you bid against yourself, and that's always the worst thing that you can do in a negotiation. Look, if you were the first one to start the negotiation, which 90% of the time you're going to be that person, you shouldn't also then bid against yourself before they'll even take it into their boss. Stick to your guns. It doesn't matter how low that initial offer is, have them take it into their boss. Have their boss laugh them out of the office. Who cares? Both of you know what's going on. Both of you know the dance that you're dancing. They've got to take it in. Stick to your guns. They'll take it in. They'll come back and they'll give you the poor mouth routine. And they'll say how they were browbeaten, but how they really went to bat for you, etc., etc. Just make them do it. I'm not willing to negotiate against myself. Why don't you take the offer that I gave you into your boss and see what they say? If you can find this exact same unit for that price, I recommend that you go get it today. Well, since you asked me to start off, that's my offer. Maybe you can take it to your boss and come back with a counter offer. My boss was really angry with me with that offer that you made, but I did my best. There's no way that I can get you this unit that you're in for that price. Now I've got something else on the lot that's really similar and maybe I can get that closer to what you're looking for. This is a common tactic. They'll try to convince you to take some other van. They know it's not the van that you want, so they're trying to get you into this one by showing you something else on the lot that's absolutely not going to meet your needs. Don't fall for it. Don't even start playing the game with them. Well, I'm not really interested in any other van that you have out there. This is the one that I kind of want, but thanks for offering. Why don't we have you talk to our finance guy? I think we can get you into a monthly payment that you'll be able to afford. This will be a common tactic you'll run into. The RV dealer will try to get you to focus less on the actual final sales price and more on a lower monthly payment. Don't fall for it. The final price of the RV is the final price of the RV. Stick to your guns. You know what the absolute maximum price is that you're willing to pay and the monthly payments don't matter. Well, that's a really nice offer for you to finance the van for me, but I've actually rounded up my own financing, so I'm okay there. Look, I really wanna make this deal happen. What I'm gonna do is gonna throw in some free floor mats, and if I can swing it, a free seasonal pass to some campgrounds. Would that make you buy it today? Oh, wow, you're going to give me a free seasonal pass to local campgrounds? That's very generous of you. However, I'm not willing to pay for those things. So if you can't give those to me for free, I guess I'm just going to have to turn them down. Sorry. Another common tactic that these guys like to use is throwing in free things like an inspection and free campground season passes. Those things you're going to get anyways, and they're just hoping that they're throwing them in to sweeten the pot. Just discount them and tell them that you're sticking to your price. Sometimes they'll sweeten the deal by telling you they're going to throw in an extra long sewer hose. That's what they did for me. If you think that you can get a better deal from another dealer, you ought to take it. Well, I'm not so sure about this fan anymore. Maybe I need to take a look at the competition. You know, there is the SS Agile and the Passage 144 by Midwest Automotive. They're both built on the short sprinter platform and they have almost the exact same layout. And I think I can get them for a lot less than what you're selling this one for. Dealers hate when you do this. And that is when you point out to them that there is competition, especially from other local dealers. This is one of the best tools in your tool belt. If you know that there are other dealers which make a similar model to the van that you're looking at, 
and that the dealer that you're currently at doesn't sell those models, oh, it really gets under their skin. And it sends a message to them to let you know that you're about ready to walk off their lot and onto their competition's lot. Salespeople know that their chance of closing you on a sale is much, much higher if they can keep you on their lot. The moment that you walk off their lot, it's very hard for them to get you back on it. So play that card and play that card wisely. If you play it at the right time, you can really get a lot of bang for your buck. Well, I'm sorry it didn't work out, but I guess I'm gonna have to go look at that SS Agile or the Passage 144. If you guys change your mind, give me a call. You got my number. Now I guarantee you that they'll call you back. Some dealers have called me back before I even stepped off their lot. Some dealers have called me back a month later, but every one of them has called me back and has offered me to come back in. Please come back. I talked to my boss and we can get it for the price that you're asking. We're gonna lose money on it, but we spent enough time negotiating with you. And we just wanna make the sale. We hope that you'll tell all your friends about what a great dealership we are. And we hope that you bring it back here for service every single time. Now it's unfortunate and I wish that I could say to you that the RV buying experience is magical and is wonderful, but the truth of the matter is that it isn't. It's one of the worst parts of the RV lifestyle, but I'm here to tell you if you can get over that hump and you can get past it, and you can get yourself into your ideal RV, it's well worth it. Now there are a couple things that can work in your advantage when you go in for negotiations. One of the first things that you should do is time your purchase very well. Now the two best times of year to purchase an RV are A, in the winter, which is when I purchased this van, or B, when the model year cycles, around June or July. Now in the winter, sales are very slow at RV dealerships. And if you go in and you see, like I did, that the dealer has a couple of the same van at their dealership, it means that they've been sitting there for six, seven, eight months. And sales are slow and they'd like to make a deal. So that's the first thing that you should look for is Go, off, go in during the off season. The second time of year that's really good is not during the spring. The spring is the worst time of the year for you to go in. It's when there are lots and lots of potential buyers out there and lots of competition. So I don't recommend you go out during the spring. I recommend that you wait a few months and go out during the summer, June, July. And the reason for this is that's generally when the model year changes. So this year, around June and July, the 2019 models are going to be coming out. So if you can time it where you go on to the lot and the 2019 models are already on the lot, but they also have 2018 models, you're probably gonna get a much better discount because everyone wants the 2019 models and no one wants the 2018 models. Now, one other thing that's really important to consider is are you going to buy locally or not? There are pluses and minuses to buying locally. Sometimes you can get a better price if you shop around outside of your, your region. But the challenge with that is after you make your purchase from a dealer that may be hundreds or thousands of miles away, where are you going to take your RV in for servicing? Most RV dealerships their service departments are so impacted today that they're only able to adequately serve customers who purchased from them. Part of this problem is because sales are outpacing dealers' ability to scale up their service departments. But the end result is that if you don't purchase your RV from a local dealer, then you're gonna have a harder time and then sometimes it may be impossible for you to take your camper van in to your local dealer for minor repairs. You're really on your own when you go in to do these negotiations and the better armed you are with knowledge and the better armed you are with knowing exactly what the maximum amount is that you're willing to pay, the better off that you're gonna do.
I'm also happy to help you. Occasionally people will send to me uh, their offer and I'll look it over. Uh, also other ultra mobility subscribers and viewers will help out in the comment section as well. So you're not quite alone in this, but ultimately when you finally go into the dealer, it's just going to be you and the salesperson. So I hope these tips are helpful to you and will help you get the camper van that you're in love with and will get you into the RV lifestyle. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I'd love if you became a subscriber. It helps me continue to make great videos. Leave a comment in the comment section below and I try to answer each and every one of them. We'll see you again next time on Ultra Mobility, your channel for Class B camper vans. Take care. Bye-bye.